person who doesn't have diabetes, who just is really health conscious to go to like the Walgreens and buy yourself this little device. So I implanted this device into my body and I started taking my own um, blood glucose levels after every meal and something interesting happened. Um, the more I started to understand the trends in my charts, the more I noticed uh, there was something uh, incongruent with everything. Um, everything was variant. There was variance in everything and it was driving me nuts. And um, I talk about this in my book and you can read about it as well as see my charts and see what meals actually triggered crazy leaps like up to 150 um, units uh, and those meals that were you know below 100 and I noticed that it wasn't so much what I was eating that caused spikes but it was what I was putting into my um, body and what was getting into my cells so in other words it's not really what you eat but it's the amount of what you eat and it's also determined by how fast you chew your food and uh, after finding out what really works which is the more you the less you eat and the better that you di you chew your food and actually um, you know I do like 30 to 40 chews now per every bite uh, the less of a spike that you will get in your glycemic index and this was interesting to me because it shed a light and it pretty much told me that it's not so much what you eat but it's what gets to your cells what gets actually inside after you bite and digest it that matters so even if um, you know I'm saying don't eat fruit for six days you know take it as a grain of salt take it as just uh, a little token of what I learned in my own experience and it's not the absolute truth just like eating 30 bananas uh, is not the absolute truth um, for living an amazing healthy life you know I wouldn't advise that to anyone I don't care who you are and I don't think eating fruits 100 you know percent of the time is the best way to live your life so with balance comes uh, everything you know you with balance you can do anything and achieve amazing results so if your question is to lose five to ten pounds of fat you know in as little as one week then you gotta do these crazy cycles where you gotta trick your body from what it's used to and you gotta take away something that scientifically has been known to not only spike your blood glucose but to store um, triglycerides and fat which is fat so that to answer that question I wanted to really go into depth and give you a little bit of the larger scope of things and uh, I'm glad I answered that so I'm just going to answer one more question that I've been receiving lately and it's about the cold showers um, now I've always been into uh, cycling with my showers taking hot and then going cold but one of the reasons why I wanted to go full cold um, was because I wanted to first be sustainable for the environment and uh, I wanted to pretty much not use any more uh, excess energy because hot heating water uses excess energy. And second and most importantly, I didn't have a water filter attached to my shower so I didn't want the steam from the from the tap water to get into my lungs because uh, believe it or not if you breathe in steam it's just as worth as drinking water and you're drinking in all those contaminants you know lead mercury you know and all those harsh metals fluoride uh, so that's a major reason why I stopped doing that so um, a tangent to those reasons is because it helps the body prepare in what's known as thermal load. Uh, in thermal load, you are pretty much put into harsh conditions and your body instantly adapts and starts to metabolize fat at a faster rate and burn calories at a faster rate than it would if it was just chilled out. So, 
that's why, that's another reason why I wanted to do it, because I wanted my body to start, you know, feeling like it was being under attack, and then therefore start to burn off more calories faster throughout the day, and also burn unwanted fat. So to answer the cold shower question, it's for, it's for a lot of reasons, but the main reasons are those three that I just explained. So try it out for 30 days. This is my 30 day cold shower challenge. I want you to go home and um, instead of you know relaxing in hot shower, um, take like a warm shower to start off and shampoo yourself and uh, soap up your body. And then how you do this is you turn it all the way to freezing where it's ice cold. And what you want to do is you want to just allow yourself to just turn around and enter through your back like this, like if this was a shower head. And this is a shower head right here. So you want to you want to let the shower pretty much, you know, hit you right here. You want to back into it. You want to back into it and allow it to just, you know, run through all the way down to your butt, down to your legs, down your spine and everything. And you want to just hold that position for up to three minutes until you get used to it. And you want to slowly turn yourself around and, and, and get into and face it. And then while you're facing it, it's good to do a meditation. I like to do a meditation that lasts for, you know, four five minutes sometimes and I'll get lost in the coldness and it's really cool and you should try it and after you do that um, in the morning before you eat uh, do it for 30 days every morning and at night if you want to be extremely radical and see results even faster do this and you'll notice that in a couple of days your body will start to you know be more muscular and you'll burn fat without even doing anything. So that's why I take cold showers. So send me more questions. Um, I wish I had more time to answer them, but I'm busy right now. So send it to um, rawfood at live.com and, uh, and or to my Facebook or my YouTube channel, anywhere. I'm open to suggestion and I love answering everyone's questions. So have a great day. And I will talk to you soon.